sharing the uh the link mm -hmm. on my facebook page if i see awesome. okay. thank you for that yeah. connected for a moment and we were just uh talking about my reactive dog like before everybody <laughs> and i'm glad we got no the dirt out of the way i know and i'm so glad no one heard because <laughs> was like, oh my god well i mean just 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 saying alone that you have a reactive dog is like you know you're not alone i i think the biggest thing is that a lot of people um we harbor so much guilt around our dogs and like my, <clears throat> myself included and and you know i became a a dog trainer because of the dog that I got in third year university, which is like the best time to get a dog in the middle of university while you're also dairy farming and you're working at, uh, you know, three other places to try to pay for school. Um, it's the perfect time, perfect time to get a dog. Anyway, he, uh, because he was so difficult, I mean, like someone coming to the door, or the postman going by, uh, dogs and cats and kids and horse. Oh man, he, I don't know why he wanted like, eat horses i don't think he understood what they were um because he came from montreal but like charge at everything so yeah i absolutely um am a product of you know my heart dog that uh it taught me so 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 much and i'm so grateful to have had that experience with him because you know and that he you know forgave me for all of my mistakes too you know yeah. as as i did his mistake but in a dog's mind they're not, they're not thinking that way and you know the conversation that you're still having in your mind that argument that you had in grade eight 30 40 years ago dogs don't live that way most of the time they're just like in and out and on to the next thing so uh the times that you screwed up with your dog in your life so far are like is, is what do whatever you got to do to let that go because they're living in the moment which is why they rehab so quickly and it's why they train so quickly because they're like oh this is this is what i do now oh okay so yeah and do you think that there's an um i mean i should have asked you this when we were talking about my dog but do you think there's an age they could, no, no no this isn't this is an ask you. They got to ask me these questions. This isn't your time. Okay. You don't get to ask. No. <laughs> well, I just that that just is kidding. a big deal, right? Like I I I when I was um when I had my clinic, I a lot of people in Vancouver rescue dogs. Like I yeah, I, sure. I find I find that there's a, a large group of people and a large group of people that came to see me. And you know, some of them were eight and ten and seven and mm -hmm. five, and they're sure. like over the top you know you get people saying oh he's too old to change or that's not fair to try and you know it, it's so ingrained in him and yep. you know so is yeah so there is, is is there a, is there an age the the old dogs new tricks thing i think they were they were talking about um men in that the old dogs can't learn new tricks at the <laughs> they were talking about men over 40. um so <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, so the oldest dog that ever came through, um, when I was doing a board and train, she was extremely, and I mean, extremely dog aggressive. Uh, Moxie was a 10 year old German shepherd. So she was 10 and she had hospitalized two dogs. Um, she, she, she would try to kill anything and kill, like she would actively try to, um, and she lived another, Man, like five or six years and she was like no muzzle off leash little like like little dogs big dogs old dogs young dogs she made a full 180 like perfect oh. perfect example of like yeah once she learned that oh there's consequences to trying to act this way and then the big part of especially with like dog pack socials they gotta live with a balanced pack of dogs dogs that aren't trying to kill each other all day long yeah and going for long walks and hikes and then having an outlet uh, for that frustration through exercise, but also just through training to go like, hey, stop staring at that thing. Like, no matter how much you want to eat that Pomeranian, like, you, you got to pay attention to me. So, um, yeah, she absolutely. I, so I think that there are there's always exceptions. And, and in, in terms of like, you have there are, there's reactivity, there's aggression, and then there's predatory aggression so predatory aggression i've personally never seen i've learned about it um but those are dogs that can live with other dogs but then as soon as they see anything outside of their pack they they're just like they go into prey 
prey mode of like hunting and killing. Um, but that's super, super rare. So um, yeah, D rescue mm -hmm. dogs, purchase dogs. Um, they, I, I think they can all stand to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, Evan, I have a couple questions prepped for tonight. Is it do okay it. if we get into it? Do it, yeah. Um, so do it. talk to us about the signs of reactivity in a dog. What does it look like? Sure. So, I mean, I get this every every day. Someone um, fills out the form. And if you do want to do a consultation with me, just go to dogandstyle.com um, and we can talk about training options. It's not a like behavior analysis um, um, lesson. It's it's to talk about training, which we'll, we'll talk about throughout this and uh, decide if we're the right fit for each other as well. So there's a, a reactive dog is often a dog that reacts to something, go figure, uh, in, and, in and around kind of an, an explosive manner. How they're responding to a trigger, and the trigger could be anything. It could be like a bicycle, a cyclist going by, or a car, or someone um, approaching them, or oftentimes it's another dog. They see another dog, they get overstimulated, and they react. That reaction can be barking and lunging and growling. Um, typically those are, are the behaviors that, that we see. It's just like an explosion of energy. They're communicating something in just like an out of control manner. And most of the time it happens uh, when the dogs are on leash. L leashes are simply just not part of a dog's natural genetic programming. They, they don't come out of the womb with a leash on. Um, and so they're, they're, it, it makes no sense to them. And no matter who you are in the world, I guarantee that I can, once I find out what you really, 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 really want, if I put that just outside of your reach, dangle it, get it, get it, get it moving, and then hold you by your shirt, <laughs> you're going to get reactive. You're going to get reactive real quick. And some of you might even redirect on me, which happens with dogs, where they're like, ah, give me the thing. And then you might do this, Ugh. right? So th it's the analogy I use all the time. And it's so true. And if you've spent any time in a bar, you may have seen, you've probably seen this. Two guys, well, it's typically guys, are lipping off to each other, hey, you know, insulting each other, spits flying, but nothing's actually happening until one or both of the guy's friends come up and go, come on, Tom, it's not worth it. And they pull him by the shirt or they touch touch him. And then Tom's uh, hitting here <laughs> and hit there. And the haymakers start flying. So it's that it everybody wants what they can't have. And so it doesn't mean that we just like, oh, we'll just cut all the leashes and let all the dogs of the world run free. Because I believe our number one job as pet parents is to keep our dogs safe, right? And that's where a leash comes into play of having um, having that restraint on the dog to actually, you can't go see the other dog. Actually, you can't run across the road to chase the squirrel right now. Actually, you can't do this, that, and the other thing. And how great would it be if we just let all our dogs free all the time? Yeah, it would be great until bad things started happening because they, they have those natural instincts where they go squirrel and they, they run off and, and do that thing. But, uh, to circle back to what is a reactive dog, it's a dog that is, reacting to a dog but has no major intent of causing damage now so there's reactive and aggressive so a reactive dog is they want to verbalize they want to get to the thing they're acting like a fool they're acting crazy but there's no actual they're they're typically they're they're social dogs they don't want to just go over and start attacking now reactivity can turn into aggression reactivity can present itself and, and dip into that aggression field. But initially it starts off not as I want to go over and hurt the other dog. It's just frustration that builds. And over time, because they become reactive to more and more things and typically less stimulating things. So it starts with a dog. They start barking at a dog and throw it in the chat if this is you. They start barking at a dog um, and they don't get to go see the dog. And, uh, and a lot of dogs that go to doggy daycare those are typically the worst ones because <clears throat> they go, hey, another dog, play for eight to 10 hours straight. That's what they see. And they all the dopamine starts firing and all the triggers are firing of let me go see that other dog. And they and then they get this rush of like they barked and they got flooded with all of the chemicals that happen when you get overexcited. And then people stop taking them 
they stop walking them at the high traffic times. So, well, we're not walking at 7 p.m. anymore. We start walking either later or way, 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 way earlier. And then the dog doesn't get that rush. So then it's like they bark at, at the first car that goes by and then it turns into a leaf and then it's just shadows on the wall. And they get because people start taking them further and further and retreating further and further into their homes with these dogs and they don't actually um, they get less and less exposure to the world and whatnot so that's a reactive dog interesting um i i julie do you want to yeah i do so so what is fear aggression then like what like you know when you you hear fear aggression like they're not they don't want to be aggressive or sure that's my next next question oh was it sorry (laughs) no it's fine no you're absolutely right what are the different types of reactivity like so uh, there's reactivity and non-reactivity. It, it, it's it's that simple. And a lot of people want to get into the, but why did this start? And what's the, how do we, like, what if my dog's scared and whatnot? A lot of times it's like, most people are going to hate to hear this. <laughs> That's fine. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter why your dog is reacting because the approach is, the same because you're not there's no way to verbally tell the dog and build up their confidence they're going to keep reacting until you either create an alternative behavior to right if you're going to do it purely positively or to teach the dog to avoid the behavior through a balanced approach of pressure release and add food and so whether your dog is scared which almost like it might start initially as, whoa, that startled me. I'm going to bark at it. Fear, true fear aggression is I'm going to get you before you get me. And I've seen it maybe three times in 10 years. Mm. And, and most people are like, but you haven't met my dog. It's I'm going to get you before you get me, which means that dog had to go through multiple experiences of being beaten up. Basically, if it's dog aggression, for example, and you'll see it a lot with rescue dogs, you see all these little white All these little white furs sticking out all especially around their ears and their eyes and their face. Those are scars. That's where the dog got bit. And then the hair grew back without, and Julie could probably tell us, but the the pigmentation is in there. So they're little scars. And so I've seen it a couple of like three, maybe four times where the dog had been repeatedly beaten up by other dogs. And so the dog comes out of the gate. I'm going to get you before you get me. That's true fear aggression. And the rest of it is the dog blew up at something and maybe out of fear, but then it just very quickly turned into, oh, that was fun. Oh, that was, oh, that was great. I got this huge rush. It's, it's, it's often little man syndrome, right? And the dog can be giant, but it's that like, ah, oh, yeah, big and tough and whatever. And, and cause there's no consequence. They never actually get to the car. They never actually get to the other dog. Um, and, and it's, and therefore it's never put in check. And so Um, it's not nearly as common as I don't fight people about it anymore. If you want to think that your dog has fear aggression, maybe, and maybe it does. Absolutely. I don't claim to know, um, everything about dogs. I never expect to learn everything is there is about dogs. And that's why I love dogs and dog training because every dog is a little bit different and there's tons of different techniques. I've gone and worked with the most purely positive trainers in the world. Some of the top trainers, uh, that do like marine animals and training rhinos and stuff and and also very quickly learned what the old school um compulsion training was like and 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 uh hightailed out of there pretty quickly and then worked with some of the best balance trainers in the world too and constantly learning different little techniques and this and that um as to how to deal with dogs but the thing that i learned through and through is that until you create an alternate behavior, until you get the dog to avoid that action, it, it, the behavior is going to keep repeating itself. It's going to keep coming up and up and up. You're just changing the threshold. And ultimately, reactive dogs, a big part of my process besides nutrition and exercise and control and all the other things that we'll, we'll get into is actually socializing the dog in a constructive way, letting these dogs get back mm-hmm. to social. I do it all the time. There's not a ton of trainers that are doing it because it's it's terrifying, right? Where you're going from like a dog that's like, ah, at the end of the leash lunging to like, okay, bring them in with a bunch of off-leash dogs um, once you have control, obviously. And um, <clears throat> is there a difference between like, have you seen dogs that have been like, people fear aggressive, 
people fear aggressive but not aggressive to dogs sure all the time yeah so is that yeah. more common to be afraid of a person than it is to be afraid of another dog? way way oh, okay. way more I, way yeah, more. that's that's was that's been but mine. but but they but they're typically not aggressive they go into avoidance most of the time mm -hmm. like that's most true. animals and the thing is that you have to ask yourself the thing that i always go is like when dogs screw up and they bite people or they bite something or, or whatever is did the dog have a choice right that's the that's the really important thing because if the dog had a choice to go away right. as in the door is open there's no leash on the dog it's not in a car it doesn't feel confined at all and it still ran down the street and bit the kid on the bike it's not scared of kids riding bikes no it had a choice right yeah. and it chose but if you go and you there's this guy that has this doggy daycare around here and he as part of his like introduction to dogs is he needs to be able to go over and pick the dog up in the corner which is like I don't know you don't freaking come pick me up like I, i'd bite you too and so th that's a point where like it did the dog happen. have a choice no the dog didn't have a choice someone was coming over to pick him up in a corner while the dog was being restrained on a leash like that that so was the dog scared yes was the dog aggressive yes but given the opportunity that dog never would have acted that way and that's yeah. that's a really big determining factor in fear aggression but dogs that are fear aggressive um as soon as as you know as soon as given the opportunity they'll attack because they just go they, the trigger so hair trigger that they go right into that um but again it's like you know did they, did they have the option yeah and it, i think it's i think that's the part that people aren't gonna aren't gonna know you know like i i the amount of animals that i've seen that people think it's normal or like especially around kids around little kids toddlers oh she's just being a, a child or he's just being a child or he just wants to be nice to the dog or the dog is a blah 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 but meanwhile they're like standing on its tail and pulling its ears and sticking Barbie doll boots up their nose and, and, and like, yeah. kids are really good at cornering dogs. Really they'll be good. like, they'll, <laughs> cause they're interacting with their human. And so then the dog goes and lays down under a table. It's confined now. It's, it feels trapped. It wants to be there cause it's a denning type animal. And so, but then the kid goes over, nobody's watching the kid anymore. Nobody's watching the dog and the dog goes, the kid goes right into the dog's space. I was that kid. This is this is a bite really? right here. Yeah, it was a Dalmatian. It wasn't. I didn't go under the table, but I did on that one. That was the last abs. <laughs> I'm still a dog trainer. The one on my ankle is from this dog, and the one on my calf is from that dog. Yeah, I've been bitten a lot in my life as a child. As a I always child. go, where the hell were my parents? Well, the Dalmatian um, <laughs> was the dog was back tied to a door while everybody ate kids running and going and coming. And then I wanted to feed the dog five years old. I wanted to feed the dog. The dog's like, ah, like, let me, let me, you know, let me go at everyone. He's over the top. He's barking and he's reactive. Right. And then stupid adults, let me continue go up to the dog instead of waiting till he's calm or not doing it at all. Because guess what? You don't have to meet the dog. You don't have to interact with the dog. No matter how much you love dogs, you don't need to meet every one of them, yeah. um, nor do your kids. But sure enough, we just kept going up. And then we got up to the dog that's like this and eh, bit, me in, bit me in the cheek. His owner was a plastic surgeon. So it, it just turned out to a cute dimple. But um, <laughs> yeah and and then i i you know i i wonder what happened to the dog like it wasn't his fault he was jacked and it, it's to be expected you wouldn't go to a human that's like ah, you wouldn't be like okay just go meet him he's had a couple of drinks but it'll be okay honey like you wouldn't, <laughs> you, you wouldn't do that right but we go we expect that every dog needs to be friendly every dog needs to be nice every dog needs to be good with kids bullshit uh you know like I've got two Tell kids and I don't enjoy that. kids most of the time, you know, <laughs> like it's well, that, same, same more about that. 
like tell if we all think that every dog should be the same and every dog every dog every every dog and a lot of people that have reactive dogs expect that the dog should never react that's not normal the dog is being a dog it's supposed to react otherwise <laughs> your dog is just like a walmart greeter which is fine i've got one my my black lab is is walmart greeter anybody anything can come through but she's also very um she's very quick to tell another dog like hey i'm not that kind of girl like she will, she will snap at your dog and she will pin the snot out of your dog in a second. And she's rehabbed a lot of reactive dogs because they come charging ah, and she just grabs them, shakes them a little bit and pins them to the ground. She's never put a hole in one dog in all these years because she goes, what? Like, but if I ran into a room ah, and jumped up on you, how are you going to respond? And, and so in their world, they use force. They go, nope. Yeah. They use force to control and there's a hierarchy and, and all that other stuff. Um, do we as humans wish they didn't have that because it's intense and it's strong um, and it seems very, very aggressive. It's intense, but we got to be careful with our words that it's not. Uh, yeah, sure. OK, she was being uh, her 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 um, intention was not to be aggressive, it was to be assertive, to go, I'm not that kind of girl. Don't jump up all over me. Right. Um, but we expect that dogs and it's a big it's a big thing that I communicate to people when they before they sign up is like, hey, don't expect that this dog is going to be that your, for example, your Great Pyrenees um, that you live in downtown Toronto um, in an apartment. Don't expect that your Great Pyrenees is going to love everyone that comes into your house like you've got a livestock guardian dog with no livestock. He's 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 going to be now some of them are just like the most roll over cuddle walmart breeders again it's not that every breed of dog or every you know type of mixed uh street dog or reservation dog or something like that is the same they're all unique even in a litter of 10 the same mom and dad the same genetics but different dispositions so yeah, yeah i think it's crazy that we that we expect our dogs to be perfect all the time and that's the lesson that i learned with my first dog rush and that's the lesson that you're learning with henry right is like but at the same time, I think that we can keep pushing them to be, um, it's, it really comes down to, I always tell people, it's about control. Can you or can you not control your dog? Because if you can't control your dog, that's a liability, right? It's, it's straight up a liability. Now, you, you always have, I say, four options. You can ignore it. You can pretend like it's not a problem. And it might come back to bite you in the ass, literally, or, or legally down the road at some point. You can avoid it, which is a great technique for a lot of people right? Like, just don't put them in the car. Just don't um, do this. Just don't like when people come over, put them in a crate or put them in another room or, or yeah. put them outside. Like if he's not great with kids, that's okay. Just avoid it. Don't have kids over or whatever, right? Um, you can redirect the behavior, which is a very popular technique in the purely positive uh, community, which is take your attention off of this onto this. The, the, the problem there is it's, it's a, it's a temporary solution because you're not dealing with the root of the problem, which is the dog is out of control. You're redirecting the dog's attention. Um, but if the dog wants to go over like with, with actual aggression, for example, the dog um, always still has that intent of like, I want to bite. And with reactivity, you can redirect to a point typically. And then typically the threshold just gets too tight, like typically within about 10 feet the dog won't pay attention to the food anymore. The dog won't pay attention to the tr to the to the toy anymore, yeah. to the whatever. Unless you've got a crazy high drive dog, like it works really well with. I just finished working with a a, a beautiful couple in uh, California, and they've got a, this awesome rescue shepherd, um, purebred German shepherd. Like he's a big boy, this black shepherd. And uh, the squeaky ball was the final thing. We got all the control through tools and pause and, and food training. Um, and so then the final icing on the cake, because the dog is ultimately social. And that was the hardest part for them to learn was like, your dog lives with two other dogs. And as long as your dog doesn't get over the top before he meets the dog, he is social. Like he wants to be social. And you'll hear it a lot in their voice with a whine, with that frustration, there's almost no, mm, there's no guttural. It's, it, there's that frustration there. What kind of creature is in your hand right now? A cat. <laughs> oh, okay. I can only see the white and I'm like, guinea pig, rabbit. What is that? Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I don't think 
I, I don't think dogs need to be um, the Walmart greeter, essentially. No. And I, th I think that, you know, I also think that they, like when we talked about Henry, right? Mm. Henry, Henry bothers everybody else more than he bothers me. <laughs> yeah. You know, and we'll have a, like we have pure later guys coming in and out of here every yeah. five minutes. And sure. Um, what upsets me the most sometimes is, oh, all dogs love me. I'm really good with dogs. All dogs love me. I know. Don't, don't let him in your truck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's good. All dogs love me. And they've got this big box. That's of not the problem. Bones, right. And all the yeah. milk bones oh, and the, the, fucking, the milk. I know. Bones. And they're like, they're, you know, Henry jumps into the pure later truck. Yeah. And he gets fed these milk bones, which he's yeah. never had in his whole life. Salt and, and red, it's red like, red okay, Henry, five. time to get out. Uh, no, no, come on, buddy. Let's get out. Then there's like, <laughs> you know, and right. Your little guys are walking around the truck going, This is my truck now. Get my dog, your dog out of my truck. I'm like, I told you not to put him in, anyways. And then it's this. What's big... the problem? I thought you were great with dogs. All yeah. dogs love you, right? It no. shows. Um, yeah. So, and that's, you know, it's, there's a real boundary issue with people. And I, I literally was that person. Like, I think we've all at some point been that person where it's like, it's fine. You know, um, I, I had that, I used to really have that problem when I drank, but, uh, that's, <laughs> that's so much shit. It's fine. I'm totally able to you know, fly the plane. It'll be great. So, um, yeah, that blind confidence and, uh, yeah, I've been, I think that's why I was bit so often as a child and why I never get bit anymore. I haven't been bit in, in a very long time because I don't, I, I don't approach dogs. One, I, I never, and like, I'll, I'll say hi to them, but like at a healthy distance and they can come to me if I, if I, you know, and not get the, uh, the Cujo vibe, but uh, yeah, I'm not up in dog's face. I play hard to get. And that's why they love me is because, because I'll give them, if I'm going to pet a dog, do you know how I do it? I do this. I go, I'll give them one light little pet under the chin or, or, or like typically under the chin a little bit to the side. And then that's it. And then they go, that's not it. Don't you know, you have to pet me for the next 20 minutes. And I'm like, yeah, we'll see, maybe. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great game to play. But um, yeah, everybody wants what they can't have. And that's oftentimes why dogs are so reactive because they just, they're not getting socialized um, or they get reactive and then you let them go say hi. It's if you, if you reward a calm mind, you'll get more of that, which is very easy to say and, and a challenge to do, but it can, it can be done through training and you, you don't have to meet every dog. Your dog doesn't need to go over and say hi to every dog. Um, it's very unhealthy to do that because there's a lot of dogs um, that don't want your dog to come over. Like my lab, she's like, I don't, I don't want that unless there's no leash. And then she's totally cool with that but she doesn't like the restraint of the leash um and it and makes her, her it her, makes yeah, her yeah. It, it makes her get on edge so um and there's a lot of dogs that will you know grab your dog and shake the snot out of them in, in and put holes in them she she won't put holes in them um yeah there's lots more questions i'm yeah, sure there's tons ton of, there's a ton of questions let's I rapid fire them yeah. And I think my last question for you, Evan, was like ways to support a dog with reactive tendencies, but you've been kind of sprinkling. Well, I'll tell you a, a ton of stuff that you guys, that everyone can do that has nothing to do with training. I sell more adored these products <laughs> than anybody. If yes. your dog's gut isn't right, you're, it's just an uphill battle. Like it's just an uphill battle. I, I've shed many a tear over not knowing about Adore Beast prior to. And um, it was Peter uh, Ciancarelli that got me, that introduced me. And he told me about this before. And he's like, oh my God, and this person, and she's in Nova Scotia. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I got it. Thought I knew better. Um, I just didn't understand microbiome. I just didn't understand gut health uh, until I started taking care of my own gut health. And then uh, just getting, like, just understanding the problems that a lot of dogs have. You cannot have itchy skin and diarrhea on a regular basis and not be effing miserable, right? <laughs> like if you, if you've had any amount of bug bites, you know, we all go camping 
and you're covered in bug bites and you're just sitting there like where's the where's the lotion and and diarrhea like oh my god like you know it's <laughs> i don't need to tell anybody here it's terrible so if your dog's gut isn't right it's affecting their skin it's affecting their bowels it's affecting their brain so every dog that goes through training with me um is doing some sort of gut health protocol and you know depending whether they just came off of antibiotics or depending like that's where the adored beast collective facebook page or ask um julie but a lot of times like some of these dogs have leaky gut and that like that's got to be absolutely brutal so there's a leaky gut protocol everyone should have gut soothe at like as that diarrhea band-aid just sitting there just you know get the large container and just hold on to it it doesn't they, they don't it doesn't expire does it no yeah so it doesn't expire just make sure there's no moisture getting into the thing um and you know healthy gut and all of these other things so that's like i mean everybody's on this page if you don't have the majority of the products just start chipping away and i know stuff's expensive having a dog's expensive it's it's expensive but like just stop drinking tim horton's coffee and you'll be fine <laughs> you know like if you if you give up tim's and start making coffee at home you'll be fine like 20 cent coffee versus five dollar coffee that's terrible um you'll be fine there's a lot of different ways that we can that we can support our dogs but yeah i get it it, it, it life's expensive and so yeah like I, I think i have six of every adored beast product and i just cycle through um you, using them and whatnot and then adding real food to their diet i think a lot of people and myself included used to get so overwhelmed by the raw diet thing that i forgot that like it doesn't have to be perfect like don't like if you're gonna feed kibble if you're continuing to feed kibble because you're so overwhelmed by the raw diet thing which yeah it's super overwhelming just add in some fresh don't sweat it like don't worry about it being perfect before you switch everyone says well i'm going to read these 12 books and then i'm going to take these two online courses and then i'll be ready no you won't no you won't you will still be super overwhelmed trying to make your own food um doing all this stuff there's pre-made raws that you can get um to supplement in or just add some veggies like green veg mix it up sardines and really like for me the the ones that i tell people if you're going to put anything is green veg and oils like some sort of fats in there so that it's going to the skin it's going to the brain um coconut oils mct oils sardines things like that and that's where you can jump on uh adore Bee's collective site but also check out planet pause on facebook it's free they have a paid inside group it's like 12 bucks a month where you get a ton of great information um but you know it's 2022 20, or whatever year it is however many years past COVID we're three years into COVID is how I'm telling time these days but yeah adding in that adding in that fresh food makes a huge difference to your dog's overall behavior um yeah that and the gut health yeah well I mean gut brain connection is really it's so well researched in children, right? Like my, when I first did leaky gut protocol and <clears throat> at my practice, I would see, you know, dogs would come in like really aggressive dogs and people would be like, if you can't help me, blah, 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 this blah. Is it. Yeah. You know, I and I would, I would send them to uh, someone that I worked with in Vancouver, but before I could figure out a remedy, I would like get mm -hmm. them on different food. As soon as I would get them on different food, then so often they would get diarrhea right and then i would treat their gut yep. and then they would come back and they would be a different dog yeah like emotionally a different dog and say okay yep. so this is like 25 years ago right okay there's something to this <laughs> yeah. there's, a, there's yeah. something to this is keeps happening whether it's cancer yeah. whether it was aggression whether it was doesn't matter yeah and so, you can't see that many dogs without putting things together and it's the no. same thing as I put together, I have no scientific evidence to point to why this is definitely a fact, but when you prematurely spay and neuter a dog, perfect recipe for that and kibble and no gut health stuff and antibiotics, perfect recipe for a reactive dog. Like yeah. so many people are like, oh, my dog was like, you know, at eight months, my dog just started getting crazy. Yeah, your dog has a wicked imbalance going on in their body because the thing that 
God or, or the universe, or whatever you believe in, whatever designed your dog, whatever turned out to be your dog was designed to have those parts. I'm a huge fan of, of controlling the pet population. I think it's super important. Um, and that's why, uh, in addition to the gut health, the real food is hormone support. So I've reached out to, and we're going to be talking soon to Andrea Ring, your friend, um, for a homeopathic remedy for that. And then the other thing that I suggest is Dr. Mercola has a product. I don't know of any other products besides those two, the homeopathic remedy, and then Dr. Mercola's hormone support, or glandular support rather glandular, for yeah. male or, yeah, not the hormone one, that's different, uh, glandular support. And like night and day difference. Does it give you control? No, that's where training comes in, right? When your dog gets over the top or you take the leash off, it's uh, like they automatically are like, oh, I, I'll get you the paper and I'll make you eggs in the morning. Like they don't know how they're not just like, you know, they don't just become a butler, but um, they they chill out because they're it, is it their adrenal glands? Is that what is taking over when the sex hormones go? Well, when the sex hormones go, yeah, like what happens is their cortisol get all, gets all screwed up because their adrenals and their pituitary and their thymus and everything try and their thyroid even everything tries to um compensate, compensate. and then yeah. they get sort of like a hormone waterfall it's called right so it's just like this this insane Blood. it's it just does it just yeah they're all over weird. the place they're just a movie they are. mess yeah yeah they are they are yeah. they're they're not there's not a lot of um and then physical that's a totally different thing right like what not having their sex hormones while they're developing makes a yeah. massive massive change in their bodies it's just yeah. and awesome. ligaments and all that other stuff if you want to avoid even if you're like ah whatever but you want to avoid a five thousand dollar surgery per knee or yeah, like keep them intact until, until they're done growing which like a german shepherd you're looking at like 18 to 20 months kind of thing right yeah. before that all those little connections are joined uh with the ligaments and tendons and muscles and all that other uh really important stuff yeah. it, it, it takes a long time for them to grow you're like oh at eight months they're the size that they'll always be no there's a lot of other things that are growing um and to be honest like an intact dog all my dogs are intact um but i've also had like i've had like seven rescue dogs at one time personally and so um they were all my rescue dogs have been, um, other than a couple of them that I got, you know, directly from the person, not through an organization, have been spayed or neutered. And, um, but for me, when I have the option of, which I always have the option of what dog I'm going to adopt, is when were they spayed or neutered? Because these dogs that some of you that have these dogs that were done as babies, like eight, 10 weeks old, um, it's just you're it's an uphill battle like until you get the nutrition and the and the gut and the and the uh glandular support like a, a few weeks in maybe three or four weeks in there's no point really starting to train you i mean you can always train and just doing that but it, but you're fighting an uphill battle yeah. until the body feels right and that's the stuff that i just feel so bad about over the, the past years was like dealing with like real true aggression and then not having the dog the rest of the dog working well and a lot of times it was like dental issues was on top of all that the worst dogs i ever had truly like if you get within five feet of them they will full-on attack you a lot of them had dental issues and mm -hmm. I, I had a tooth go abscess a couple of years ago and, whoo, that's a different kind of pain that's a different kind of pain um so yeah all right questions hi evan my hi. my dog's son named chewy became reactive when his pet parents divorced now he barks at humans and animals especially if he doesn't see them coming as his pet grandma we have sleepovers and his dad is open to helping him could you make a recommendation uh he's sweet still trainable and three years old yeah, I mean, there's like, it's such a, I can only imagine, you know, it's like dogs going to live with a new family or whatever or families break up. There's a lot of tension in the house. You know, you go through a divorce, like, you know, my, my wife and I are, are together, but like, you know, we fight um, and shit gets heavy, you know, like, and your body is just like pumping all of that out. So 
weeks of that building up and some sure i'm sure some divorces are just mutual and just everyone doesn't say anything to each other and whatever but there's a lot happening and then in that because your whole world has changed the dog is not getting exercised the dog is not getting exercised the dog's not getting exercised so it like there's other ways to exercise your dog when you're like, I got kids and I got a job and I got this and I got whatever. You can outsource it. You can get a dog walker, which is really great. Um, a treadmill is a fantastic option. I just got a, a almost a brand new treadmill for a hundred bucks on Facebook Marketplace the other day. And I started, you know, it's on my Facebook page of how to introduce your dog to do it. I just did it with people the other week because I was like, I'm not, I'm really busy right now um we just moved again and it's like you know if i can get her running on this treadmill which is a mental thing it's stressful initially for sure because it looks like why is the ground moving the ground i'm supposed to move not the ground um but once they get over that like there's some of the oldest videos on my facebook page is rush just full blown he loved it sprinting on the treadmill because they want to exercise they don't want to watch netflix they want to run and that on top of like the hell stuff is the source of your uh is the source of the frustration from the dog that's why they get so reactive is because they're um you know they're they're simply just so much pent-up energy when you get a tired dog you get a happy human um that's that's for sure so more exercise do the dietary things um and then reach out and there's a free webinar on my on my um on my website as well for reactive dogs. So everyone can go to dogatstyle.com and check that out as well. It's about Thanks, 40 Sarah. minutes and you can you can check it. It's also on the YouTube page, I want to say too. Great. I'm going to go look it up right now. Uh, Julie, you talk about that all the time. Just letting a dog be a dog. It doesn't it doesn't always have to be the the running even. Like just let them smell, let them sniff. Like you talk about that all the time. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people think that, uh, that 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 you need dog. to do like endless amounts of kilometers, um, but just taking them somewhere different, like a field, is a great option. Um, you know, ideally not like just after they've sprayed or something like that, but like take them to a this side of the highway or something with a long leash and just let them smell. Um, that's not going to be enough but it is tiring for those dogs you know taking them to a new environment how fun would your life be if it always consisted of the same three block radius like it would it would suck um unless yeah. you lived deep in the woods then it would be very interesting uh yeah i talk about it with old dogs a lot mm. where you know when they can't run anymore you know is like well don't leave them inside yeah Mufasa love no, that's all we wanted to do is just go smell just go you know? smell the, the smellier smell the better like just yeah. take, them, take them anywhere that they can and and give them the time to really smell yeah but don't let them yeah smell it's it's, it's mind-boggling like we it, it's because we can't comprehend what's happening for a dog when they smell like like if you've ever been to the IMAX with 3D glasses on that's what the dog's experiencing with their nose times 10 like mm -hmm. like we can't we even then like it doesn't make any sense we can't like it's like uh yeah it's chinese food uh that smells bad uh that's an apple like for us it's like you know our noses are terrible but for them they can smell the age of something they can like yeah. uh, just so many different layers it's literally 3d smell um which we we can't comprehend so like yeah your dog is is getting a lot out of smelling mm -hmm. yeah. thank you um, here's for those geriatric dogs, if they're really, really geriatric, bring stuff home. Go grab some grass. Go grab some dirt. Um, bring things home to them for nice. them to smell yeah. and throw it in your lawn. Um, they'll love it. That's yeah, that's very nice. Uh, this one's interesting. Professional dog walker without specifically cool. training a dog to be less reactive. Is there anything I can implement into our walks to help them out? Um, so before they get into the pack or can you read the question again yeah i'm a professional dog walker without specifically training a dog to be less reactive is there anything i can implement into our walks to help them out the less like uh well all those supplementations like right. tell the owner and, and and if you have a business man be a dealer of of adored beasts is that an option they can be can they yeah. can they do that or no 
um, so sign, sign up being a be an affiliate or be um you know be a distributor and and make it mandatory like you a lot of people are very scared to go like you know when if it's your business you get to to get to to say whether the dog can come or not and if the prerequisite is that the dog is on healthy gut and glandular support then that's there's no option right um and and if they're if they're getting it from you it'd be pretty easy to tell um or just add it on as an additional thing um they get a they get a free range egg and a and a and a you know whatever amount of healthy gut a day and tack it on as an additional service but that will make uh that'll make a huge huge difference um in in what you see a healthy dog is is a much happier dog for sure yeah um here's one from sandy she individually individually my dogs walk on leash well Sometimes I want to walk them together up. for a sniffari versus training. Yep. However, together they're a nightmare. They're reactive when they see another dog. How do I work with this 300 pounds of reactivity? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like two mastiffs. 150 um, pounds each. Yeah. 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 Those are, those are English mastiffs or uh, Napoleon something. Um, so yeah that pack mentality is is uh it sucks you know it's like it's something where they'll they'll be totally fine individually and not so you know if you can't re again you have those four options you can ignore it you can pretend like it's not happening and go uh you can avoid you you can pretend like it's not happening you can just hold on for dear life and you know strap a uh, 400 pound uh, weight to your to your waist you can uh you can uh, avoid it. When you take them somewhere, you could drive them somewhere where you're not going to see people. But some of these people are like, we're in San Francisco. We're not driving anywhere where we're not going to see anyone. Um, and yeah, so you're, it's going to be hard, but avoiding it would also categorize as, um, as not taking them out together. Like I know you want to, cause it's a time saver, but if it also means that you end up on your ass with a broken elbow, like it's not, it's not worth it. Right. Um, and and uh, you can redirect it. So if you, and most of the time with redirection, you got to get the dog's attention before uh, they actually do the thing. Now, here's the trick with a, a redirect. Most people give, okay, so let's say this is, oh, and I'm blurry again. I'll, my, my screen likes to, likes to do this once in a while. Okay, so that's the trick. So let's say this is, this is the reward, okay? So I've got the reward and my dog wants, this thing most people go hey look what i have just as it sees another dog or you're about to pass another dog and you're healing with your dog and you're giving them the, and then you give them the treat before you actually get past the problem right before you get past the trigger and that's that's where a lot of people screw up bait the dog lure the dog with the treat so if you have a treat like i i'm a big fan of like single ingredient treats freeze dried organ meat so lung liver tripe which is just like oh the most awful smelling thing in the world uh but the stinkier the treat the the more likely it's gonna work so you take the treat and you stick it in between your thumb and your index and you make a little cup so now the dog's nose is in here and look they're also partially blocked by the thing so you take it and if your dog's walking let's say on your left it's down here and I'm bringing it from my dog's nose to my belly button or my chest up to me, here to there, here to there, continually re-engaging that nose. And maybe they'll even chomp at that a little bit back to me. Pay attention. Good. Let's get past the distraction and then reward. Because a lot of times we go, hey, pay attention to me. Thanks for paying attention to me. We feed them and then they go, thanks. And then they react, right? So they're getting both. It's about every, remember, everybody wants what they can't have. That's why your dog is reactive, but use that to your advantage. Hey, look what I got. Whoop, it's over here. Look what I got. Woo, come on. Yeah. And also being that, um, bringing the fun, bringing that higher energy in that moment, as long as it's not pouring gas on the problem, right? Because 
Uh, some dogs, the more you, eh, yeah, they're like, they can't handle it. And they just start spinning and barking and whatever. But some dogs need that little like, ooh, oh, geez, mom, mom had a couple of shots of tequila before today's walk. Oh, I'm going to, what's going on here? Right. And you're, ooh, 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 and you're paying attention till you pass. So that's the, that's the redirect. And then a correction, a big one that works super well. And is like, it's, it's a little invasive, but it's not terribly invasive. It's very accessible. It's just water getting water and then teaching the dog here's the here's the trick is if you don't constantly want to be correcting your dog it's the same idea as when you see the police what happens to your to your foot your right foot it goes off the gas off the gas on the brake right away so that visual triggers oh want to avoid that so with the dog what you're looking to create and again you don't have to correct your dog if you don't want to do i'm not saying you have everyone has to go and correct their dog but if you've tried all the other things and it's still not working for you and you're ready to move into balance with the negative and the positive is to tell them that you're going to that a correction is coming so no quiet leave it whatever you want to say whatever comes natural the words don't matter as much as you want to believe that the words matter, that you saying come and your husband saying here matter, it doesn't matter. It's how you're doing it. It's the, the inflection in your voice and your body language more than anything. Julie was just saying, all she has to do is look up and her dog Henry's like, where's the eagles? Where's it? <laughs> right? <laughs> Completely visual cue. No verbal needed at all. She just looks and the dog's like, yeah, that means eagles. Let's go party. And so- <laughs> Having um, a verbal, because we're primarily verbal creatures in how we communicate, having that verbal to go, the spray is coming. So saying no, and then spraying the dog, not on like mist setting. We're not trying to create a spa setting. We're supposed to make it invasive. Now you can take water and spritz it in your own face and like, did it hurt? No. Was it uncomfortable? Sure. But that's the point is to get the dog to avoid the behavior. So you go, if you act this way, and the real trick with reactive dogs is get them before they react. Once they're actively losing their minds, it's you, you, the amount of pressure that it would take to change their mind is a lot more than if you get them beforehand. So when you see them starting to stare, when you hear the, oh, oh, the you know, they're starting to breathe heavy and pant, when you see that that head drop down and the eyes go beady. That's when you go, Nope, I know that look. That's a, those are dirty thoughts. I, we do not have dirty thoughts in this household. Nope. Shh, spray. And then they, Oh, and that's when you can redirect. Hey, look what I got over here. This is better. And initially you're going to have a lot of spray, come back, spray, come back and a thing until they go, ah, it's not worth it. I get sprayed in the face every time that I, <laughs> that I do this. And then they just focus on this and that's balance is to have the two. And then once your dog actually is calm, then you can be like, okay, let's go see the dog. When it's set up, when you intentionally have your friend's dog that is proven to be very, very social, very tolerant, that you meet up and you immediately start walking together, not like this constantly, this standing around, that's when the leashes get tangled. And it's just, that's not how dogs interact. They smell and then they run off together or they avoid each other, whatever. And they go and smell things things. And if you can be in a stinky area, they're not going to pay as much attention to each other. They're going to pay more attention to the, the, the other things happening in their environment. So don't meet up at a parking lot. Don't meet up uh, in the same place that you always meet up. Go somewhere where it's like, oh my God, there's so many smells here. Meet up towards the woods. Meet up um, in a random, you know, highway ditch somewhere where it's like, it's going to smell like a bunch of other things and the dogs aren't naturally territorial. Uh, because they're outside of their space. I forget what the question was, but there's a lot of information. <laughs> Here's another interesting one. A be the best way to deter people slash dogs from coming up to your reactive dog who is in training. Say that again. The best way to deter people from coming up to your reactive dog? People or dogs. Or dogs. Mm, I've got COVID. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> It would work. It, it would works. Work. It works. You want it to work or you want it to not work? You want to be oh, polite or do you want it to work? Yeah. Um <clears throat> you have to because how many people, like <laughs> like Jewel said, was how many people go, oh, that's fine. My dog's great. I'm yeah. great. Everything's great. And it's like, how much did you just smoke? It, it's oh. not great. So you have to say to someone, no. here's how I do it. I go, sorry, we're in training. 
Yeah. But it's this, I found that's really the key. And a lot of times you like, you, you've got to, sorry, we're in training. You got to do something visual. That's like, this is pretty international. So it's, so is this, yeah. but this is a little, this is a little nicer, right? Where you can be like, stop. Or if that doesn't seem to work, or I'm like, oh, this person's checked out, like th they might be intoxicated and that might be very, that might be very apparent is I'll go, he'll bite you. Yeah. He'll, he bites. Yeah. And that, <laughs> that stops everyone in the tracks. Cause that's what you're trying to do. It doesn't matter whether that person thinks what, here's what doesn't work. Hey, sorry, actually right now we're kind of trying to do a little bit of training. And so if you wouldn't mind, they're already right at you. They're already, they're right. already up, you know, sucking face with your dog. Like they're, they're just, they're there, you know, mm -hmm. you have to be very loud um, and apparent. He bites, you know, uh, sorry, we're in training or I've got COVID. Those are my. <laughs> And what about dogs though? Because I, I know, I know when I, I was looking after a dog once, it wasn't even Henry, but where that was really dog aggressive and I would take him for walks and dogs would run up to him and I would yell to people, yeah, grab a hold of your dog. Or I would ask people to hold on to their dog or he's dog aggressive or whatever. Oh, my dog's fine with dogs. My dog's Mm -hmm. no dogs ever fight with my dogs and then you know five seconds later it's like ah, you know yeah. freak it out um do you what's the best thing to do if you're in that situation and dogs so running up to you yeah so that's different so like if your dog is um there's a few things that you can do but is your dog reactive or is your dog aggressive because if your dog is reactive what I tell people to do, I'm literally just doing a lesson with a dog that like you would be like, I can show you put it, you're like, oh my God, that's crazy. That's like, ah, whatever. And here's my advice to them. Relax your leash and walk in because we've proven that the dog is social. So when you remove all that tension right. and just go with the flow and go in and put your leash, ah, I don't have my leash. If my dog is here, <laughs> right? Or sorry, let's say this is another dog and then I've got my dog here I, and they're turning. I want to turn with my dog. I, I, don't, I don't want there to be any tension, but I need that if I need to go come and get my dog out of there, that I'm, I'm not on the wrong side. I'm not pulling my dog over the other dog. Right. So I'm pivoting. And same thing with the leash introduction. And I've got an online course for... Um, yeah for pet parents it's the seven elements of dog training so it's nutrition and play and social skills and body language and training and unwanted behaviors and a section on you working on on training you um and there's visuals of that where like tons of visuals and they're all very quick short videos um where it's you know how to do that proper leash introduction so that way your leashes aren't doing this but if a dog is approaching you and you can't control the other dog and your dog is in fact social relax a leash and walk in and get your dog in a position where they're going to do that because that's going to be better they're going to work it out a lot better than if you're yanking your dog and pulling your dog away if the other dog is truly aggressive it's just going to run and attack your dog right so you relaxing the leash or pulling the leash isn't going to do anything right it's not going to matter but if your dog is aggressive and you're taking them out in public where even if dogs are supposed to be on leash, they're not going to be on leash. Like it's going, it's just, just accept it. It's like, how can you take responsibility of the situation? Right. We all want to point fingers and be like, yeah, well, your dog was off. Yeah. Well, okay. But your dog is aggressive and it's going to happen. So either avoid it and don't go out or buy yourself 300 acres of land. And even then some asshole is going to walk through your property. Um, <clears throat> with their dog off leash, you got to muzzle your dog. You got to muzzle train your dog. Again, there's another free uh, video videos maybe, uh, or one video broken down into a couple or, or something like that on the YouTube page and on my website of how to properly muzzle train your dog. Cause it, you don't just throw a muzzle on them and expect them to tolerate it. Like it's a, no. it's a process, but yeah, um, sure. take your, yeah, like put a, put a muzzle on your dog. If your dog is aggressive and will attack other dogs that approach it, Put a muzzle on your dog and then a lot of people will say to that well then how does my dog defend itself well your dog is outwardly uh trying to do these things and regardless even if it wasn't breaking up uh two dogs dog. one of them wearing a muzzle 
or both of like is much easier than two dogs not wearing a muzzle. So um, doing that, you can carry an air horn with you, but you have to desensitize your dog or condensed air, which if the dog's aggressive, only an air horn uh, or swinging a stick in front of you is going to work, but you want to desensitize your dog to those things beforehand. So your dog's not like running away from you um, yeah. as you're trying so to you use the, dog. You use the air horn or the stick to keep the other dog away. Yeah, I'll just, you just start swinging a stick animal would have to be brain dead to walk like walk up to you like mm -hmm. um i've never like gent like swinging 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 or a second leash and i'll swing it in front of me or the end of the leash if you've got like a six or eight foot leash and kind of create a windmill effect but a stick most animals are terrified it, like of a swinging i mean <laughs> of course and it doesn't make sense to them because they don't have thumbs they're not they're, they're not monkeys right so you're mm -hmm. picking up this thing and swinging it in front of them um works really 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 well to defend your dog. Four options you said, ignore, yep. avoid. Ignore, you can ignore it. And this is, goes with any un, unwanted behavior. So yeah. my dog is barking at the window. My dog is jumping up on us. My dog is, name it, pulling on the leash. You can ignore it. You can avoid it. You can redirect it. You can correct it. And I think there's gonna be a time in your dog's life you're not just going to choose correction for everything. You're not just going to choose ignore for everything or avoid for everything. There'll be a time and a place where you go, man, it's not worth it. Right. <laughs> like, like whining in the car with my last dog rush. Like as soon as he knew where we were going and it was a fun place, the whining would start. And I like, I've got 400 different suggestions of how to work on that. But I was like, nah, turn up the volume and I just, I just turn up the radio mm -hmm. and my life was so much better when I stopped trying to fix everything. Um, when I started to accept, but you, you got to understand as a professional dog trainer, most of us take it as like, if, if I can't fix everything, I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm doing. And it's like, that's not the case at all. Your job isn't to fix everything or to have your dog be perfect all the time. It's a living, breathing creature. Of course, it's not going to be perfect all the time. And what they define as perfect is the probably the opposite of what you uh, define as perfect. They want to be laying in feces, uh, you know, under a car, like doing, you know, <laughs> chasing bunnies all day. They're none of the things that you want them to be doing. But like, that's their dogs. They're completely different species. So, um, you know, keeping that in mind and also that you don't want your, your couch, uh, you know, covered in crap all the time. <laughs> we got to strike a balance here, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. You do one more. Yeah. Well, Stephanie, I wanted to, there's, there's something up there. It's actually in the chat. It should have been in the Q and a, but it's kind of pulling on my heartstrings because I've seen it so much because yeah. I do so much rescue work, right? Sure. Someone in the thing that I adopted a rescue dog and according to the rescue, she got along well with other dogs. But now that she's in Canada, she's become reactive to other dogs is mm. this common. So I just wanted from from my experience, I wanted to speak to this, too, sure. is that I've seen this so much with not only reactivity, but skin disease or diseases in general, because they have to be so vaccinated like mm -hmm. I see animals coming over from everywhere, like from China, from India, from, and, you know, you see pictures of them when they're over there yep. and they look healthy and they're running in these like yards and stuff with other animals. They come over here and they have to have like six different vaccinations, right? Like six, mm. like they give them every two, bang, 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 yeah. bang, bang, bang. And then they have to have two rabies vaccinations and they're just like, I've seen so and it's all very quick. Yeah. It's like, really quick, but I've seen more rabies vaccinosis with dogs coming in from other countries where they become, what does that mean? Um, so when they get the rabies vaccine, especially if they're, they're getting it in a stressful time, like getting on an airplane or being, you know, coming into a shelter or something like that, yep. they will become aggressive from the rabies vaccine it's almost mm -hmm. like they start to show symptoms of, of rabies right they have wow. super crazy fear aggression when nothing's ever happened to them they have you know dog aggression they have all kinds of crazy crazy things yeah. and um there are specific rem homeopathic remedies to help um uh 
avoid that and not avoid that sort of desensitize them from that. And, you know, Andrea is someone that you could talk to about that because one of the best one is actually, it's called lysine, lysine. And it's, um, it is actually made from a rabid dog saliva. So that's Ooh. what the remedy is actually made from. So, it's so not the best sales pitch, but uh, it isn't. But <laughs> it, well, it's like apis, <laughs> right? Was. So yeah, if you yeah, can, for sure. if, if you get a bite, a, a a a bee sting, the remedy that you take is apis, which is made from bee venom. Yeah. Right. So it's like likes cures likes. There's nothing actually. Yeah. If you don't understand what homeopathy is, it's just, that might, I know, that you might hear scare that, you. That you're like, oh, oh my just God. throw some rabies on rabies it. It'll be fine. Dog. Exactly. But, you know, and there's all <laughs> yeah. kinds of different things. But, but I just wanted to speak to that because I see it all the time. And I'm sure there's other reasons. Do you guys have any products? We don't have. Well, we're not. No, we can't. We can't sell it. They don't. Health Canada doesn't let us sell it. But Andrea sells it because. She's what about the What about the anti vaccinosis thing that you guys really have? helps? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's not it's called, called that anymore, is it? No, it's not. It's called um, rebalancer, and that was just we never had an issue with it ever, ever, ever. And then as soon as COVID happened, then everybody thought we were anti vaxxers <laughs> Anti vaxxers So yeah, we had to sense. change it, and it was just yeah. yes, but but. You know, again, and I'm sure that you could speak so to that. So you would use that and whatever. Um, if we, yeah, I would, I, you could use that. If it doesn't work, then you could call Andrea or another homeopath and, and, Andrea and Ring. speak to them about that. But we've seen it a lot in, in aggressive dogs. I never thought of that. At the clinic. I never thought was, of that. And it's, if you read Don Hamilton, he's a vet that I know really well, or Richard Pitt Karen, they're two veterinarians that are really, really well known for um, teaching homeopathy. And it's literally called a rabies vaccinosis. Hmm. That's what it's called, where they become aggressive after their rabies vaccine. So I see all kinds of nasty stuff after, after vaccines. Yeah, so that would be something too. Oh, and, and, and flea and tick medication guys, please. <laughs> plays a huge role especially all these edible ones that dogs are eating like holy mackerel all of them but um it really affects your dog you can't expect to feed your dog three months of you know pesticide and and not have a reaction like yeah. you don't eat they, it see what happens like don't, don't they eat, work but, so. I, like don't don't those kinds of things work because they literally kill whatever pest like there's enough poison that they kill the in their pest. hair follicles that they'll die within within a very short period of just touching your dog's uh, fur so uh, yeah i mean it's it's one of those things where like yeah lyme disease sucks um it's brutal but you know my dogs have been wearing the baltic amber collars the 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 uh, whatever the one is from manitoba there i, sh I should probably have that memorized um and uh, and then essential oils. Uh, and I haven't, I haven't pulled ticks off my dogs and it's been three years since I haven't given them anything. Yeah. Can I do one more question here? I think it, it's going to go for both of you. Uh, mm. Sarah's got a seven and a half month old GSD dealing with allergies, yep. possibly yeast for her. I noticed she's yeast. more reactive when she's itchy or irritated, sure. um, which is possible issue for some people. I'm sure. She eats yep. raw balanced. She's using Fido's Flora, Julie. Uh, just started last week with Fido's. I mentioned this because she'll bite her legs from time to time. And when I try to redirect her, she'll bite me. I know it's not her fault, but her natural reactivity as a shepherd is very normal. And we do tons of socialization, exposure out in public. Uh, we just moved through areas and coexist with the world, which has helped so much. So you so, can talk to her biting her while she's trying to make her not bite her legs. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the, the redirection, um, muzzle train her till you can, if she's only seven months old, a lot of times the dogs are just like, she's so young right now, you know, and you get a German shepherd. That's just, <laughs> she's wild, right? Like I bet she's just a little spitfire right now. So like, um, if, if you notice a behavior happening as a result of you doing something, try to change up what it is that you're doing, how you're approaching. A lot of people will 
pull the leash and show a treat or get right down in the dog's face as they're going through a bunch of stuff and they're not getting, um, they're not getting what you're laying down. Like they're, they're just getting like, oh, something in my face or your leg is always right there. You know, you're pulling them into your leg and the dog's like, break. And then they end up biting, biting your leg. But, you know, you, you can, seven months of German Shepherd is still a lot of dog too. So you can muzzle train her. There's nothing wrong with that. It, think of the muzzle as a seatbelt. Nobody on this, on this live or anywhere outside of, you know, maybe Central America is going to give you any amount of hard time for wearing a seatbelt. Like it's just, it's so ingrained in the world culture today that you wear a seatbelt. Um, again, other than <laughs> other than a couple of countries in, in, uh, in Central South America, but it, it's just like, that's just the way it is. So a muzzle, we see it and we go, oh, the dog's aggressive. No, maybe we're just working through some stuff. And you know what? My dog can't hurt anything. Can't hurt me, can't hurt you, can't hurt your dog. Like this is the dog that should be seen as like, oh, that's the safest dog here. So, you know, don't don't sweat it if you need to muzzle train her as part of it. Um, but change up whether you're pulling her into you, whether you're sticking the food down in her face, having an audible cue, especially like these high drive dogs like shepherds, like I was saying before, was the, the icing on the cake for the, the client that I was helping virtually in California was the squeaky ball because it was that dog's kryptonite that doesn't work for a lot of breeds of dogs, but it does for shepherds it does for border collies where they just get so obsessively fixated on something. You do need to have a certain amount of control prior to that. Otherwise the dog's just going to be like up on top of you. Um, and you got to be careful having tool uh, toys and high excitement, high arousal things in a social environment. That wouldn't be the time. But if you're in a social environment, let your dog go socialize. There shouldn't be any expectation to have them focus and pay attention to you. And Julie, can you speak to the um... itchy? Yeah, itchy just started Fido's floor last week. Yeah, I mean, it's going to take a while. Right. I mean, I notice I notice dogs get worse before they get better. And that just naturally makes sense to me because it seems to be everything in, in, in life. But I've had a yeah. lot of clients go through this where they're making the switch. They're adding in the Adore Beast products and it, they, they go, God, like 10, 10 to 14 days in, they're like, oh, my God, it's almost worse right now. And my experience, and I'm like, go jump on the, the Adored Beast Collective and ask in there or, or, or come into here. But my experience, cause I've had, it's been probably three years now where like every client, like this is what you're doing now. This is not an option. Um, uh, some dogs, especially shepherds seem to be, it's like a flushing process where in that time frame they almost get worse before they get better and then they get better. Right. So I'm like, stay with it. You know, it's not gonna, it's not gonna do any harm to your dog. That's for sure. And so yeah stay with it and it's this flushing process um and give them anything else that's going to help you know speed up that process like like the phyto synergy um milk th milk thistle probably might might speed that up a little bit faster as well um yeah just reading that it also said something aller intolerant and suspected she had giardia is that the one that you're looking at Seth? Um, no i'm looking at oh. one up the top sarah that's what I'm looking at. It says something that she had, her dog had, had Jardia. She had one round of antibiotics for Jardia a few months ago. Let's see if I can find her here and give her the mic. But I think, I mean, just, just even that, um, um, you know, that she was susceptible to Jardia is, is telling me that she's got a weak, a weak gut. And a lot of and a lot of shepherds suffer from leaky gut. I don't know why it's genetic, but it seems to be genetic. A lot well, they get ones, IBD but... really easy too. Yeah. They, they, just, they just don't seem to have a really strong a, a strong GI. So they don't have strong I've... genetics anymore. So I mean, uh, it, it's just it's just shepherds. You can only breed something so long before things start to fall apart, and it is what it is. And you have the dog that you have, and we we love them. We're like getting rid of them. So it's something that yeah. we need to. Uh, have considerations for it's the same thing as like a lot of like you know boxers or or those type dogs i'm like get on 
mushrooms like if your dog's not eating mushrooms and that's the thing where it's like when people say what adored beast products would you get i'm like get two of everything and they're like haha and i'm like no seriously and i don't they're not paying me to say this stuff I'm <laughs> like, close. I'm, i know yeah. i'm like oh what is this <laughs> it's true though like i like i i talk about it all the time with everybody because like what do i stand to gain nothing like I stand to gain that you and your dog live a better life. Like this is why I'm a dog trainer. I'm starting to get a little emotional about it because it's my job. And the reason that I love being a dog trainer is to not just help dogs. Like I love dogs, but I love people more. And I have no problem saying that. And when you're miserable because your pet is miserable, nobody's happy, right? I want to help you. I want to help your dog. And this stuff works. So it, they work in conjunction with each other, like having um the the chaga or chaga or whoever it depends where you're from in Nova Scotia how you say it um and then the turkey tail they work synergistically it's the same thing as essential oils like lavender works is stronger or works more um holistically when you mix it with frankincense and so it's just like that's just the world you know you can't have a plant without having dirt you can't have either of those without having mushrooms really um and so yeah you using using the products like if you can afford it and if you can't afford it just chip away at it like make next month the thing that you add on that or ask family and friends you know christmas stuff you know be that crazy pet parent where it's like that's your christmas gift or your birthday gift to yourself or or whatever is to add those things in but it it makes a huge difference guys like you know, my, my great Pyrenees, um, Mufasa just passed a couple of months ago and there's no way he would have made it to 14, um, without some of these products, a lot, most of these products, um, the gut soothe got us, got us through some, some, some doozies, um, and, and the other products as well, but switching him to a raw diet. I mean, he was intact as well, made, made a huge difference. And then genetics, some dogs, um, we'll live a long time and some dogs won't. So, um, but the more you can, the more fresh, the more of the gut stuff that you can help and then cl cleansing them out as well. Yeah. So if she's wondering specifically stuff, I mean, um, when you were saying about phytosynergy, it is, it's, it really would be, it's so good for IBD. Um, it's good for their immune system. So I would, I would, along with, um, Phytos Flora, before I would do yeasty beast, cause she's wondering about yeasty beast. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do that. I would do Phytos Flora, um, uh, Phytos Synergy and liver tonic. That's what I would do with this dog for now. And if she's biting her because she's touching her feet, it, it probably hurts. So what I would, what I would also do is, is go to, and I would probably give her go to three times a day for three days, and then start also trying to, to touch her more because she's, if she's, if she's not wanting her to touch her, I'm sure she's hurting. I'm sure there's a, there's an itchy dog spray recipe. I know you, I don't know if you guys have a blog post on it, but I know that um planet pause has one where it's like witch hazel and a few i think it's witch hazel and a few other things to kind of yeah. calm down the inflammation um yeah. having that i think epsom salts uh correct me if i'm wrong can also be be calming and soothing to the skin yeah uh, like chamomile so inflammation. yeah chamomile tea we also have something called owies and oopsies mm -hmm. um there's the the love bug mask where you take yogurt and you mix the mix love bugs in it and put the mask all over their body so that you're oh. actually giving probiotics on the skin Topically. rather than just in the gut that's hey what do you think of the probiotic shampoos well it, it depends on what the shampoo is because if you're using the wrong mix in the shampoo you're not going to have any you might be putting them in but they won't be viable <laughs> right Right, once right, they right. get on the skin right yeah so that's why i like doing the mask leaving it on doesn't hurt if they lick it off it's yogurt and yeah. probiotics and then just rinsing it off yeah that that's really helpful too but the go go to has arnica and aconite in it so it it just helps settle their nervous system and it really mm. helps with pain and you just give it to them orally that's so, the thing about these reactive and aggressive dogs well mostly dogs that are actively biting 
man, a lot of times there's a reason then we're just, we're missing it. We're Big missing time. it. And with older yeah. shepherds, I've called out brain tumors uh, three times where, and it's only when the dog is like, it, when it's completely random, when people tell me, I often say BS. There, there's a pattern. There's almost always a pattern. You're just missing it. You're just not being observant uh, in that area right now. Um, but if it's like completely randomly and they're full chomp um, biting you and random people and whatever, oftentimes, and it's always been with shepherds, there's a, there's a brain tumor. And obviously they got to be a certain, well, maybe not obviously, they need to be a certain age, but it's not going to probably, it's probably not going to happen in seven months. <laughs> It's, it's, oh, she's God. probably just she's probably just uh sore and inflamed and sore, yeah and itchy and grumpy yeah yeah like you said i i get grumpy and i'm not itchy like i can only imagine <laughs> when i'm itchy Ugh. you know the mustache gets itchy okay i'm gonna call it that was that was an excellent session evan thank Yay. you for, for teaching us and sharing your insight with us um always a great You're guest welcome. evan's been on with us before actually if you look yeah. back in our archive we did a session with you gosh maybe two years ago now or last year crazy um, yeah but there's no. another session that we did together i can't remember what we talked about but it was um same shenanigans thing. mostly just awesome. you know. but for everybody that's watching evan is who i go to if i'm like i don't know what to do yeah so <laughs> Yeah, and I'm super picky. I won't let it, I don't I don't talk a lot about my my animals training or or whatever, but um yeah, for me to ask Evan for advice, it means that I I trust his judgment for sure, which is is um, welcome. Yeah. No, it's uh it's always fun being here and uh like I said, guys, uh, I'm only getting paid, you know, $5 on every product to talk about how, no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> no, this, uh, this stuff works, it, you know, it, like in my online program, I, I often talk about health first. Like if, if, like you can train the dog and the dog can sit and the dog can lay down and learn to come, but like, man, they're going to be so much easier to train and happier and want to do it. When their bodies are feeling good that means yeah. good nutrition good supplementation lots of exercise um and then love. training lots of well i never i never mentioned love because that's that's often not a shortage of a lot of people are really good if they're here if they're here, if they're here love yeah. is not love's not an issue love's love's no. not an issue yeah yeah good yeah. Okay. Thank again. you so much. It's really nice to see you again. Okay, guys. Yeah. We'll talk Thank to you later. You. Good night, everyone. All right. Not your Bye. loved. Bye. Bye.